talking like that? Uh, I feel good. You're not feeling good right now? Uh, I'm good. Dude, I was just about to ask you, like, what we should smoke this week. And, um, uh, so you're, so you're not doing too good, huh? Uh, I can't. It's all I'm to talk. What? I'm having a hard time talking. I can't even understand you, man. Um, hey, let's do this. How about communicate to me through the smoker? Through the smoker? Oh. Uh. Uh. Yeah. uh, you don't feel good. You had bad turkey. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video with Everything Avery. We out here at Cars and Coffee. Hold on, I gotta answer this real quick. Hello? Avery. Hey, what's up, Jake? How you doing, brother? What's up, man? How you doing? Doing good. We out here at the Cars and Coffee. You know how we're always doing. Out here with many, many cars, bro. It's a good day. What's up? Oh heck yeah, you know we out here. Right Why? What's up? What you got? So, uh, you mind making kicking Scott up? He's not feeling the best right now, and I'm headed over to tap a bottle right now to beat him. Oh, man. Maybe you might be able to hook him up with a ride over there. Oh, yeah. I think I can do that. So, you sounds like you need to get there quick, huh? Hey, Jake, you know I got you on that, man. I'll do that. Yeah, like, I, I can't get on there like two hours from now. I need him there like 10 minutes if possible. Ah. So, hey, man, you know I got you. Cool, man. Hey, I've been loving the page, checking out your videos. It's like, you know, you're really blowing up right now. So, hey, appreciate uh, it, man. I appreciate everything you're doing. And I uh, definitely appreciate you hooking us up right now in this little bind you got. Hey, you know I got you. Hey, let me go and jump up, cool, load everything, and I'll be right there. All right, hey, that'll work, brother. I appreciate it. All right, Jake. Yeah. Nice. Hey, what's up, Scott? How you doing, brother? Good, man. We're not. How Still you been? Good, man. Good. Heard you ain't feeling too good. I ain't feeling good at all, man. Yeah. Hey, well, hey, I got you, brother. Oh, Jump on in. All right. Hey, man, thanks for giving me a ride. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem, man. I was actually heading this direction already, bringing my other friend. You ever met Eric? Hey, guys. What the? It's good to see you outside of work, I guess. Oh, you guys know each other? I do. Huh. Small world. Feeling good, man. Yeah, I feel like walking. Hey, cool, man. Well, thanks anyway for hooking Scott up. Here, fast ride. What's the, what are you doing in there? Wow, awesome. All right, cool, man. Hey man, 
Thanks again for uh, bringing Ash and Eric out here to meet up with me here at Tap and Bottle. Hey man, anytime. No problem, guys. Cool. Hey, um, since you're here, you want to come in and, and grab a beer? Uh, I can't be smelling like smoked meat, guys. Maybe next time. time we'll get to hang out with him. I know. He's so cool. Hey guys. I like small like smoked meat. Yeah, maybe another time, Eric. Like to smoke meat and stare. Drink cold beers and folding chairs. Just a couple of friends who make burnt ends. It's and set. Tombstone Brewing. 
So obviously made here in Tombstone, oh, Arizona. Nice local, okay. Yeah, so local beer for you. That one would be great. Another good option for you if you want to do something a little different. We could do this mango nada made here in Tucson by Dillinger. So it's going to have a little spicy tahini and sweet mango in it too, and then the tart sour. So I think that would be fun. Oh, that to might try be out really too. good. That yeah. sounds really good. Yeah, we're using like a, a, a sweet heat, a little SPG nice. rub and everything. Yeah. So that so might be kind of be great. Yeah. Hey, cool. that's making me thirsty. I want that one. <laughs> oh, I can open it up for you. It's good. <laughs> so how does it work? If someone wanted a beer, they just tell you which one we want? Or? Yeah, so they actually, customers can shop here in the bottle shop, and then they just bring it up to the bar. We crack it open for them. We pour it in a nice glass, or they can take it to go. So we have two prices, one to go, and then one to drink at house. Hey, awesome. I'm ready now. <laughs> we'll take one of each. Okay, awesome. <laughs> how about we go try it out, y'all, so you can see if you like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get lost. I know. We can get that. lost in this place. Okay. So this is great. You can crack open any of the beers here. And especially if you want to try something before using it in a recipe, this is a great way to do it. Alright. Tahin, this is gonna be good. Yeah. Oh. You just get a little bit of that spice, but otherwise the nice tart sour, a little bit of sweetness from the mango. There you go. All right, thank Can you. Can I try a little too? Yes, please. To Come on, we got a toast. Yeah. This will be great. Okay, so this is how we toast here. Okay. We say, yay beer. Yay, yay beer. beer. Yeah. What do you guys think? That's good. Yeah. That's really good. So. This would work out perfect. Yep, yep. Smokity smoke. <laughs> Yay beer. <laughs> Can we try something maybe on tap? Uh, a local one that's, I guess, really close to your location yeah, here? Totally. So it's awesome where we're located because there's great breweries all around us. We've got Crooked Tooth, we have Pueblo Vida, we have Borderlands just right over here, all walking distance. But Man, we got to try these places yeah. out. I'll pour you guys a half a bison that's from Pueblo Vida. Does that okay. sound good? Okay. Yep, yep. Good. We gotta do the toast. Yeah. Scott. <laughs> Ready? Yay, Yay beer. beer. Oh man. This is good. Oh yeah. Hefo bison, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I always think it's perfect for Tucson weather and that's really good. Around. Yeah. I, I, awesome. I could drink that all day. <laughs> I think it's clearing that? my throat up. I think uh, any beer you can drink all day. <laughs> 225 all day long. Man, this is good. It is. So, um, I mean, thanks again for, you know, showing us your place. This is awesome. Actually, one of our co-workers uh, recommended this spot and everything. Yeah. So, oh, great. But yeah, so Eric, uh, he's, he's uh, usually in our videos working. I'm glad he's not actually showing up I working know. at this place. <laughs> my fine, fine friend, Eric, over here. Eric, hey guys. come on, man. You don't work here too, right? What? Oh, no, I was just using the restroom. Oh. Well, so you want to have a beer? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we can actually enjoy your company and not have to leave because he's not on break or anything. Yeah, he's right on now. break, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you know, can you grab him a beer, Rebecca? Eric, All right. fine, fine friend, what can I get for you? Sounds great. Uh, what do you recommend? How about a drink? Uh, the IPA, the Red Rock. I'll have one of those. Okay, please. let's Thank do you. it up. Hey man, did you hear she's brought up some of those places? We need to go check them out. Yeah, she mentioned Borderlands, and I think that's just right up the right up the road. You want to try that place out? Absolutely. Yay beer. Yay beer. Dude, where is Scott? I I don't know, man. He was like just right behind me. I, I mean, it's literally a block away. And I don't know where he's at right now. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna have to call him, I guess, and see where the heck he's at right now. Oh, he's actually calling me right now. Let's see, uh, hey, Scott? 
Hold on. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, guys. Where, where are you at, dude? Hey, I had to run into three different places on the way over there to use the bathroom. <laughs> you serious? You all right? I don't think I can make it. That chicken and beer from a week ago is messing me up bad. You're... I think I got the bird flu or yeast infection or something. <laughs> You got? You think you got the bird flu or a yeast infection, uh, <laughs> or, 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 or both at the same maybe time, or, or both at the same? <laughs> hey, maybe you. Can, hey, man, maybe you guys. Maybe you can find somebody that looks just like me. Uh, you know of anybody? Uh, Eric, I, I, I can do it. I mean, you kind of resemble Scott, minus the beard, maybe, but. Uh, you, you mind stepping in, maybe? Yeah, I can do it. All right, I guess Eric's going to be your stunt double for this one. All right. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, get rest and take care. And uh, uh, call me later. Make, let me make sure uh, you made it home and you didn't have to stop another dozen times, I guess. All right. Thanks, All right, man. man. See you. Bye.
one of your creations, or? It sure is. Yeah, this is good. Here. This is great. <laughs> so, what, what's your favorite style of, of beer to brew? Um, I love brewing IPAs and sour beers. Uh, sour beers are some of my favorites. Okay. Um, it, it, it does involve a multi day brew day, which is very different compared to brewing other styles of beer. Um, so, I think it just allows me to get kind of creative with sours in general. I don't know if you guys like sours at all. Fine. Fine. Yeah. All right, but before you leave, I've got to give you a little bit of the German chocolate cake. Yeah, i got to try the German just chocolate. Just released it. it. And it's exactly what it sounds like. We've got so many beers on tap. It's like the German chocolate uh, is a 7.3 percent. It sure beer. is. So. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some barbecue with it then. Yeah, That's what definitely that means. need to. Yeah, we'll definitely bring some barbecue over here. It's like you Ooh, it looks like this is uh, just uh, it just about tapped out. Let's see. Oh. That's a good thing. You did something for uh, like breast cancer awareness? Yeah, so we were we brew a beer every year. Pardon the pour, the yeah, keg no, tap. No. That means we're getting some of the last goodness. Yeah. Um, so we collaborate with Dillinger and Barrio Brewing every year, and we work with a nonprofit called um, Heights for Pink, and it's to raise money for cancer research at the U of A. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You sure didn't even put a, a slice of German cake <laughs> in this thing? I mean, this is crazy, right? Have you tried this one? Yeah. Yeah, give that one a whiff. It's got over 100 pounds of toasted coconut nibs and wow. coconut. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's definitely a dessert beer. This is awesome. Thank you. Uh, so where do you make it? I mean, is it right here? you guys brew it up? You know what? Our production facility is actually about a mile down the street. I'm headed over there now if you want to come join me. Let's do it. Yeah, sounds yeah. great. All right. Thank you. They come down the line here, they undergo a sanitize rinse, a CO2 purge because you don't want oxygen in your beer, that can create some off flavors. Okay. Common one is oxidation, that's going to taste like cardboard, definitely don't want that. Yeah. Cans come through here, they get filled, a lid, which is separate, is attached, goes through our indexer where the lid is pressed down. Uh, what should we check out next? Alright, well why don't we see where the magic really happens. All right. The brew day, the pots that I use to brew with, to okay. cook with, basically. So this is the Borderlands brewing equipment here. We brew on something called a 20 barrel system. What that means is I'm brewing about 700 gallon batches at a time. Wow. So it's kind of a lot. <laughs> so how, much, how many cans does that fill? Oh my goodness. Uh, you could easily fill uh, 10,000 cans okay. with that, so quite a lot. Right. Um, if we're filling into the full-size kegs, um, we can fill about 40, 40, 40 okay. kegs as well. So quite a bit of volume, and um, usually in the brewing world, you have two main pots that you use. One is called your mash tun, and that's where you are mixing hot water and grain together. It steeps for about an hour. Afterwards, you separate the liquid from the solids, from that grain matter, and that liquid left over is the base of your beer. That's how beer is produced. So during that steep, we're uh, getting access to a lot of sugars, proteins, and enzymes. Those are critical for uh, the yeast to consume, to convert it into flavors and alcohol. And uh, last, we have to pasteurize that liquid. And at that point, we can add hops, spices, pretty much anything you want. 
So three, your beer. all your flavors in? You do it that yeah, point? that's okay. uh, that's one way to add it um, on this. We refer to this as the hot side. Um, beer is produced over the course of an eight hour brew day, but it does take about two weeks for it to ferment before it's finished. So a beer is ready after about 14 days. Okay. Yeah. So when the beer is done here, we cool it down. We take it from boiling to about 68 degrees. And at that, that point we add our yeast and we uh, put it into one of our fermenters. This area is something that we call the cellar or the cold side. We actually have a couple of beers fermenting here now. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of action going on. This is some German chocolate cake. What's happening is the yeast is consuming a lot of those proteins and sugars and there's CO2 that's naturally being released. We do need an outlet for it, so that's why we have this here. Okay. Otherwise, pressure would build up in the tank. And these tanks can withstand 15 pounds of pressure, but we don't want to take any chances. Here is um, exits here called the racking arm, and we transfer it into a bright tank. This tank here is where you get the beer is force carbonated. Um, all beers, for the most part, um, unless you are drinking um, a specific style that doesn't require carbonation, all of your beers are usually force carbonated. Some CO2, some carbonation does happen in the fermentation mm -hmm. process, but not nearly enough for what we want for cans or kegs. Um, so we force carbonate it here. There is, we have CO2 lines that will attach here. On the other side of this piece is something that looks like a pumice stone. So it's got a bunch of holes and everything in it. And when you hook up a gas, when you hook up CO2 to that, all of a sudden you're gonna see like all these bubbles being created. Um, and it only takes us about 20 minutes to carbonate a beer that's in here. I'm not gonna lie, this is uh, a lot to take in right here. I, I, I can smoke you a brisket or some ribs or something like that, but uh, I definitely can't make you any beer. I'll leave that to you and everything, so. Uh, well, I come not. to you for all my barbecue needs because uh, you do not want to see me with a grill all right. at all. I'm glad we both have our, long, our places, yes, I guess. Yes, exactly, exactly all right. right. Well, sweet, I mean, I don't know, is there anything else? That Profits or is that pretty much it then? That's it in a nutshell, but um, I am full of information. So it's more of whatever you have questions about, okay. whatever you want to know. I don't um, know if we asked you about like, how long you were doing this. Yeah, so I've been brewing beer commercially for eight years. Eight years, okay. Um, and when I started brewing in Tucson eight years ago, there, there was only one other woman involved in beer production. And um, what's amazing is in the last four years, we've seen such a huge increase of women become increasingly involved in beer production and essentially becoming brewers and head brewers. Um, still as it stands, um, women account for less than 10% of lead and head brewing positions and roles. Um, so it's great that more women are becoming involved, but there's still a lot of work for us to do. Uh, we started a nonprofit called the Pink Boot Society of Southern Arizona, and it supports women in fermentation sciences here. Uh, and what's amazing is that we have over 30 women involved in that organization. Oh, so cool. it's been amazing for me to see, you know, eight years ago only seeing one other woman in the industry to now over 30, um, you know, nearly a decade later. So that's so 30. That's small <laughs> it is but, yeah but, but, um, but yeah it's picking up steam though, it's, it's picking so. up quite a bit so right. yeah and that's why we love pursuing passion projects like brewing with women in other countries um, for the last couple of years we've been brewing with women all throughout Mexico okay. uh, and that's been really exciting that's awesome yeah well right. thanks again for all your time yeah, and, of and showing us everything uh, I get to see your place next right yeah yeah, uh, we'll, we'll bring you in. Well, we don't really have a place yet. Maybe know, in the backyard. I know. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm Maybe eventually go. one day we can be tied in with you guys somehow, yeah. making some food. But uh, but yeah. No, no, what I'm saying is I'm going to bring the beer. We're going to go to your place, your oh, backyard, well, and then we're going to drink the beer. And, yeah, we can definitely do and that. Smoke. And <laughs> uh, Scott, unfortunately, you're not here. But I think you can show up for that one, okay? Yeah, yeah. we'll give you that one. But uh, hey, thanks again for everything. You're this was, this has you. been a, a pleasure, thanks, and um, I can't wait to try out the beer with the chicken awesome. and all that. So, all right, guys. Well, you gonna fill in for Scott? Yup, yup. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, thanks again, Scott. You know, as you saw, is not feeling good still. So Eric, um, you know, help is helping out by filling in for him. So.
I got Eric here to help Eric. Eric here to help. What the heck? <laughs> dude? Hey guys. Uh, what's up with the beard? If I was gonna fill in for Scott, I thought I should look the part. But now your beard's sweeter than my beard. Well, I mean, you know, we can't have it all, right? All right. Well, uh, well, thanks for joining and helping out so we can uh, get this beer can chicken on the smoke. Okay. We got here in front of us for the ingredients and our preparation work is basically all you need. Um, I guess you don't technically need you know, to inject uh, the chicken, but we got in an oil vinegar right here that we're going to be injecting with just to help out with keeping it juicy. Um, we're not literally shoving a beer can. I think that is a technique you can use, shoving a beer can up there, yep. but then you're kind of, you know, I don't know if the metallic taste or anything might transfer over. I never personally done it. Have you? I've done it before. Um, it's better if you have a can with the actual um, logo uh, painted on there. Um, there's some there's some people that think the, the paint gets off there, but I haven't run into it, but I do love the chicken stands. The chicken, yeah. like, like that one. It's yeah, a so ceramic. This, yeah, you wanna talk about this guy right here? Yeah, it's a, it's a ceramic. Um, you pour the beer in this and it's made by Traeger. It's a pretty good tool. I have one of those as well. So yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know, you could probably get 12 ounces possibly in here. Roughly. And uh, I mean, it'll last the duration of the smoke. Um, forgot what the little holes are in here for. Maybe the steak, I don't know, I'm not sure. Maybe it'll help. Yeah, I'm not sure. Flavor either. evaporation, but hey, whatever it is, it works. Um, again, we got our uh, beer from the Tap and Bottle. This is a Pueblo Vita, uh, the shortcut. And okay. this is a, it's a pomegranate fruit sour. So the types of beer they recommend normally for beer can chicken or light pilsners or a fruited sour. Um, but in actuality, you can use whatever kind of beer you want, but well, it was suggested we go this route, so we're gonna go this route. Yep, Rebecca knows best, so we're going with what she recommended. Y yay beer. <laughs> yay beer, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then last but not least, you gotta have the rub. So what we're using actually is on this episode is, is pretty special because we actually uh, are partner, partnering up with uh, Willow Seasonings and Blend. Um, you know, they're out there in Colorado, veteran owned company. And I've always liked um, mixing two blends up because you know, you're not really gonna get an, one blend that kind of hits everything. So I'm gonna be using the Sweet Heat and the SPG, the salt, pepper, garlic. The Sweet Heat actually it was a 2022 American Royal Best um, the Hot Rub, or Best Hot Rub on the Planet winner. So I don't know if you know anything about that. So the American Royal, um, normally it's a competition that's ran by KCB, Kansas City Barbecue Society. Um, in order to judge, judge that, or to be invited to judge that, you need, or to be able to qualify to apply for it, is you need to be a master judge. I'm still working my way to be a master judge, even though I've been judging competition barbecue for more than more than a, de a decade that's a tough one to get into and then in order to qualify for the american royal you need to win a state championship and then you're allowed to you're then you're invited to go but then there's another category where you, there's more amateur teams but that's a really tough competition to 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 win so you know shout out to willow blends and actually um you know they've actually offered a 10 percent discount so if you go to their website and go ahead and pick out whichever rubs you guys want, you can get 10% off by actually using coupon code Burnt Ends. So definitely check them out. Um, I've used it as you can see. You know they're not full. I've used them a few times. I've used them on tri tip, and now we're gonna try them on some chicken. And you know this this rub is is top notch, and I can understand why they won. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get this all chicken. Right, so done. first off, we're gonna go ahead and inject this chicken. Um, as you know, with any meat, when you're applying the rubs, uh, you're gonna use a binder. And rather than, you know, when I'm injecting, I'm kind of a two for one. I'm getting the flavor inside and also getting it juicy, but then you're also just getting kind of the natural binder from it because it's going to, uh, you know, it's gonna seep out. It's not gonna all stay in there. So as it comes out, you can go ahead and just start smearing it around on the outside to help get your uh, rub to adhere. Uh, is this something I usually use, uh, Eric? Yeah, normally I inject my um, my dressing in there. I normally use Italian dressing, and I strain out the solids, and then I dump it in and then pull out it from the cup. Um, this, this, the solids or the spices, they're already in there, and they've already imparted flavor into those 
dressing, so it's it's good to it's okay to straighten out. You don't want to get that stuff stuck in your tip, so. Yeah, so it's. I think ever since I started doing this with uh, briskets and um, I just never gone back. Usually I'm, I'm injecting everything that I that I'm smoking. So is that pretty much what you do, or you only I don't, smoke I don't, certain I, stuff? I, I don't inject everything, but there's but chick but poultry I definitely inject. Okay. Maybe one day I'll do a, a full turkey and uh, I'll see how that goes. All right. So as you can see, you know. We got some stuff leaking out. So we can go ahead and start smearing that around. Get that chicken going. And now, one thing uh, we'll talk about real quick when you're putting, you know, seasonings and rubs on, on a piece of meat like this right here, where you're kind of it's going to be moving around a lot. Uh, you don't have to waste a lot, you know, throwing it on and then saying, "All right, I got all that," and then you're going to flip it. I got it all covered. The next thing you know, you go to put it on the smoker and everything on the backside is just basically off of it. So you can throw some of it on there. What kind of what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the parts that are gonna be a little hard to get when we actually have it sitting on the smoker. So we'll kind of hit it up in there, get it in the armpits there. We'll get it up in there. All right, down the bottom. Flip it over, kind of get. All right, and then go ahead and just maybe transfer over to the sweet heat, and then we'll throw more on after. So again, we want to get it that nice 50-50 blend. I'm not like big into 30, 70, 80, 20. I mean, who knows? You might get some different taste by changing it up by that sort of thing, but I just go 50-50 on there. Flip them over. All right. And like I said, we'll go ahead and put some more on once we get uh, over to the smoker and, and get it on, on the beer and, and uh, be sitting upright like this so we can hit up all the top and everything else. I think it looks good. It's a nice pretty pinkish color. Yeah. Alright, so we got that right there. And uh alright, next step is just going over to the smoker. So it's been uh, about five hours later. Actually not. <laughs> I had this one already going earlier. But as you can see, look at that. Actually had, yeah, you know, skin look, looking good right there. Um, now let's just cut it open and, and see how, how this baby tastes. So I always hate cutting chicken to be honest. <laughs> it's such it's a pain. Cool, yeah. <laughs> Take that big one there and oh. all right let's try it out cool. thank you hey my good it's real good man it's moist it's got nice smoke flavor to it yeah seasoning uh is awesome so that that blend of the sweet heat and that spg came out really good um yeah it's Wow, it came out good. Yeah, it's good chicken. So, we'll uh, 
Oh, look at that. Oh, bone popped out there. <laughs> well, there we go. Let me try some more, Scott. Wish you were here to try this out, man. This stuff is, uh, is really good. Yeah, it's good. That's real good. All right. So just uh, recap the episode. Um, episode four, Beer Can Chicken with the Brewer. Uh, thanks again to Rebecca Tap and Bottle for uh, letting us go out there, showing us around, giving a good suggestion for uh, the beer. Uh, we got Willow Seasonings and Blend. Thanks again for uh, helping us out with the rubs on this one. And remember guys, uh, the 10% off uh, Burn Ants code, going to their website and getting yourself some rub. And also thank you to Isla and Borderlands for having us uh, and showing us their great beer. So yeah, all in all, uh, another great episode, and I guess there's just one thing left to do. Yay beer. Yay beer. That's a good beer. Yep. All right. Yep, yep. <laughs> all right, guys, catch you on the next episode. Thanks. Surprise, guys. You probably thought that was the end, but as you saw in the episode, you know, Ayla Kapai, their Borderland head brewer, actually the first female brewer in Tucson, had a ton of information, and... You know, it was great. She's throwing it at us, and it's honestly flying over my head. Um, for me, I go to the store, see what tastes good, buy the beer, use it at home, drink it, or like beer can chicken like we did. So she actually, you know, took us up on an offer. She's going to come over and actually see how we use it in barbecue and get her to make the beer can chicken, get her on the smoker, and, uh, you know, well, not her on the smoker, get her to make the chicken to go on the smoker. And... Um, you know, we'll go from there, but, you know, fortunately we were able to get our hands on some of this Las Hermanas. This is the one that did the collaboration with the female brewers in Mexico, and we're going to try it out right now. Oh, man, that's good. Wow. Hey, great job to all you ladies that uh, were involved in this. And um, again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.